Greetings, one and all, to a uh, Team Yuma game discussion of Warcraft Adventures Lord of the Clans. This is the first time I'm introducing this segment for once, <laughs> so <laughs> let's see how that pans out. For this one, I'll be joined by Madhog Vimaster, since this is a point-and-click adventure game that I thought would be something up both our alley to discuss. Say hello mm, to- I don't like the look of this. Mm-mm. Nah. -uh. I don't think Frollum, the box art, looks to like the look of it either. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even with the save ten dollars <laughs> on there. <laughs> oh, mm. boy. Mm. I need to escape this prison. Mm. And I need to announce loudly everything I'm going to do. <laughs> mm, me shaking the bars. Mm. Yes. He <laughs> talked like Yoda for a reason. I don't know. Mm. Mm. How could a man with such mop hair invoke any respect at all? Mm. Hey, maybe this is a hint for later. Mm. Yeah, yeah, okay, all the spoilers. Get it out there. <laughs> um, actually, um... Silly voices aside, I won't have much to spoil on my hand because I've only seen half an hour of that game. In fact, um, we were supposed to do a playthrough of this, at least a one shot, but several technical issues arose because, well, this game apparently is not meant for mortal eyes. In <laughs> fact, it was not even meant to actually come out or be available publicly for people to just pick up and play. In fact, the only way people were able to get this game is through... Um, A leak that happened about three or to four months ago now, I believe. I was going to say illicit means, but then again, nobody is losing money over this. This is a cancelled project, yeah. an unfinished project, and it most certainly shows. Yes, <laughs> most likely by the time this video comes out, you all have seen me and Madhog riff on the two intro sequences that were animated by Animation Magic, the people who brought you such classics as the Zelda CDI games, and uh, a couple of other forgotten pieces of history like I Am Mean. Oh, I Am Mean. You have not seen Mean yet. Let's get started. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Oh, boy. Oh, this this is... game. Now, um, I feel a bit reluctant to discuss a game that I have not actually been able to play. I've only seen a playthrough of it, and not even that much of it, to be honest. So, for this discussion, I'm going to leave the floor to the VAR, for the most part. I'm going to do a couple of interjections here and there, yeah. but this is mostly going to be the VAR's one-man show. So, the VAR, the stage is yours. Take it. I shall take Make it. Make it your slave. I, I, and then I, have the stage escape from the slavery and claim <laughs> its freedom. I shall shake the baby stage in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay, joke, okay, joking aside. It's, I, it's still pretty damn funny for it is, all the wrong reasons. <laughs> it, is, it is hilarious, yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, again, this is Warcraft, Lard of the Clones. And yes, yeah, spoilers on how Madhawk feels about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy. So, yeah, Warcraft Adventures Lord of the Clans. As I said before, it was recently leaked. And as Madhog has pointed out, is a cancelled project from Blizzard's past, essentially, which was meant to come out in the late 90s. The existence of this game right now and its public availability speaks volume about uh, the theme of never being able to escape from your cursed past. Yeah. Right now, I am aging Warcraft being some sort of lonely edgelord moping and brooding about, I can never escape my past. <laughs> so this game is your past, Blizzard. You tried to hide it, you failed. <laughs> Big time. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's a very interesting piece of history, I think. Which I oh, think... it's a piece, all right. Yes, it definitely is a piece. 
But th- actually, I think it's a, a fractured piece from a hole that shall never be. So yeah, to start off with, I would like to uh, give a synopsis on my experiences with puzzle adventure games in general at that time. Ooh, let me get the popcorn. Yes. At the time when I was uh, still young and uh, when I first heard about Warcraft Adventure Lord of the Clans, I was heavily into puzzle adventure games like uh, Day of the Tentacle, Simon the Sorcerer, Monkey Island 2 at the time. I didn't... So, the bar. tell me how you felt when they cancelled Sam and Max 2. I was gutted, actually. <laughs> yes. Yes, me too. You know, Sam and Max Hit the Road is my favorite point-and-click adventure of all time. I have not made a secret of this. Yeah. So, to have LucasArts pulling the trigger on the death of the genre through that action was a bit heartbreaking, I have to say. Yeah, uh, I was good at that time because Sam and Max was my second favorite game. So, that was another one to my list. Uh, there was other games as well at the time that was not made by LucasArts, like Fable for one thing, which for better and for worse is quite bad in its own right. <laughs> uh, why would you say for better and for worse and then say inequivocably that it's bad? Because <laughs> It seems to me that the ambiguity is unnecessary. Because, because it has a nice art style at least. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me get onto this. So, Warcraft Adventure Lord of the Clans, when I first heard about it... Lord of the Clans! Yeah, yeah that would be your name, man. <laughs> <laughs> when I first heard about this, I was excited because my brother, Danton Stormkeeper, he always loved Warcraft, and I always watched him play it out of interest because I liked the overall uh, aesthetics of what Warcraft stood for at the time for RTS. Number two, to be exact. So, seeing it come to a different genre, especially one that I held close to my heart, felt like a marriage made in heaven. Or so I naively thought at the time. (laughs) Uh, Yes. And then here it get brushed under the carpet, so to speak, uh, made me feel like... It wasn't gutting like Sam Max 2, but it definitely felt like, oh, okay, I'm slightly disappointed that I cannot experience Warcraft in a different light. Yeah, the problem with that game is that it was coming out in the worst period of time for it to come out. The late 90s. This is where I interject. Here's a very brief history of adventure games. Text adventure games were pretty big in the 70s and early 80s. There was this idea of interacting with a world that's not your own, but through the magic and fantasy of text, and you would type in your action, and the action you type in would determine the action that the character takes. The evolution from that format is the graphic adventure game, which you basically do the same things, except now you have graphics, stuff to look at. And the first one, legendarily, is... The Mystery House by Sierra Online, developed by Roberta Williams. It was the year of 1980. History was made. And history will be made some more with 1983 and the release of the first ever King's Quest. These games have made the history of the genre, but they also made the history of several asylums filled with people who went crazy trying to play these games. (laughs) So then LucasArts came along... (laughs) Uh, at the time called Lucasfilm Games. It's a very abridged history, so um, stay with me and bear with it. Um, Maniac Mansion was famous, a milestone, because they created the concept of the point-and-click formula that would become famous in the 90s for adventure games until the end of time, basically, in which you don't have to type the action, you can just manually select the action with an arrow, the arrow of the cursor of the mouse, towards the action bar and the various stuff you could do. Point, and or click. Simple as that. Uh, So the history of the genre was changed forever, and for a while it was great. LucasArts had the most quality games, even though the library was relatively short. Sierra had the most games, even though its library was questionable, if you ask me. (laughs) 
<laughs> and uh, honestly, that questionable library of uh, several titles being churned out as soon as they were made contributed to the industry to become a bit bloated. And uh, also there were all the other companies who tried to emulate mostly either the Sierra or LucasArts formula with various degree of success, and by that I mean complete failure. Um, and soon enough, the market became bloated, as I hinted, with uh, titles after titles all essentially having the same issues of moon logic and idiotic solutions to otherwise straightforward situations and uh, all of the stuff basically we complained at length during our playthrough of Discworld, which you should be watching right now. That game gave us an exhausting take of what killed adventure games in the 90s, because everything that's wrong about them is perfectly summarized in that game. So by the time we get to the late 90s, the genre was slowly dying, fading away, while genres such as the first-person shooter and the real-time strategy, hint, hint, wink, wink, mm -hmm. were pretty big in the PC market. And flourishing, too. <laughs> Some would say the peak of the RTS genre was reached with uh, StarCraft and WarCraft 3 to this very day. And uh, StarCraft, uh, I think, was released around 98 or 99. I believe so, but I have to research that. I wasn't expecting to research that at all. Yeah, you looked that up. In the meantime, I'm going to finish and get to the point, finally. So, essentially, this is a bad time to release a new ambitious game such as this, especially when you have already an established fan base that likes you because you're making RTSs and not point-and-click adventure games, which is a genre that people are just fleeing from at this point. So eventually this led to Sierra closing down and the adventure game department of LucasArts closing down as well. In fact, the former employees of LucasArts would actually go on to found their own company, which is Telltale Games. And for a while, Telltale was great in the early 2000s, but then they betray us all and started making glorified cutscenes that pass for games. But that's an argument and a complaint for another time. Indeed. Bottom line is, Wycraft, Lard of Clones, was about to come out in the wrongest possible time when there was no longer a market for it, and... Uh, Maybe, perhaps, the fan base was not ready for it. That's also there to consider. I think that uh, upon further inspection, they might have noticed what kind of cutscenes they had for their introductions. <laughs> so, also, the premise of the game is basically ripping off Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame. There's that. And uh, I'm just speculating here. I believe, at this point, uh, trust in the project have been banished. Allow me to interject on this point here. The people at Blizzard decided to review the game at this point and decided at the point in time that Warcraft Adventures Lord of the Clans did not meet their standards of what they would consider to be a fun game. So they decided to pull the plug on it because they thought no one would play this. This actually started Blizzard's now infamous trend of only releasing games when they're fully complete and with an iron fist, so to speak, on the standard of quality at that point. You know, it feels good to be right about stuff. Yes, I completely nailed the nail on the coffin or something along those lines, the proper was. And I completely got what the issue was, even without doing my research. Yes. So... <laughs> yes, uh, okay. to be honest, I thought it'd be good to interject on that point, just to basically give a fuller picture of what you were right on the head with. Yes, right on the head, on the nail of the coffin, to the coffin of the head. Of the Lord of the Clans coffin. <laughs> a nail to the head, ooh, that's painful. <laughs> yes, it is, actually. I think I lost the analogy at some point, but what else is new? Yeah, so that's... anyway, Wycroft, Lord of the Clans, has been recently leaked, and it's been available for us to play. Well, in theory, 
Yes. In practice, we ran into some problems, which Tavar is going to describe in full and painful detail to us. Oh, yes. This is my thing, talking about the technicals about this game. Right, because this game was not, well, let's say, supposed to be released, there had to be ways to get this to run properly, especially on modern systems, no less. So, for example, if you had a Windows XP system, you could just easily launch the game, as so the instructions that were left here were led me to believe. But, on more modern systems like Windows 7 or 8 or even 10, possibly, you had to do some things where you had to, uh, you had to set the compatibility mode to Windows 2000, and then you could launch the game, but there was a problem with that as well. Basically, as soon as you launched the game and played it for like five minutes, the game would start to pixelate and everything would turn black wherever your mouse cursor would go. So, in order to fix that, I had to uh, create an executable file, which is a bat file, might I add, in order to tell the game to shut everything in the background down, including Windows Explorer, thus putting my PC, essentially, into a sleep mode in order to play this game properly without any graphical issues. If I was to make an analogy here, it would be that the machine was dreaming about this game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so some people dream of Jesus. Some people dream of Genie. Your PC dreams <laughs> of Wycraft. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, this is great. So, from crushing markets to dreaming computers to today's topic. Yes. Which, again, is this game. There's... This game that we cannot properly review because we have not been able to play it. Uh, I've watched a little bit of a playthrough and the VAR played about an hour of it, I believe. Yes, I played so, about an hour of it, yes. So, what we're going to do is giving you our basic and superficial impressions of it, which are most likely going to count also as final thoughts, Yeah, <laughs> because, because I don't think this game has more to offer than what it actually shows to us. I will say this, though. Because of its unfinished state, I feel it's a bit unfair to give it a proper review, but rather we should look at it as a history piece in some case if that okay. makes any sense. There yeah. was one more technical thing I had to fix, but it was the most easy thing to do. The game wouldn't save or load games properly because save files would disappear on you. This was because the uh, file directory they put the save files in does not exist on your computer. So you had to I'm set so that yourself. I'm sorry, if it's not on your computer, where is it then? Is it on Mars? <laughs> is it on Pluto? Is it on the sun? <laughs> is it on the next dimension? Where is your save file? In a non-existent computer, most likely. <laughs> so yeah, that was one more thing that needed to be fixed. So with that all said, all the technicals all shoved under the carpet. Here it is. We're going to talk about the game for five minutes. Uh, pretty much, I guess. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say this. Um, after seeing both the openings, my standards were a bit on the low side, you know? Yeah. A bit on the side of the road, the lower side. No, no, that's... Somewhere that, in that, the that, country, that, that's really far away. That's understandable, considering it's uh, nature of the game itself. Honestly, after seeing the actual gameplay portion of this actual game that was supposed to be, but never actually was, much like the Sega Saturn, I have to say, it doesn't look half bad. I mean, there was this moment at the very beginning which Thrall was talking to himself and it seemed that for a split second his jaw was dislocating itself from the rest of his face, <laughs> which is unintentionally funny. And then there was this very well animated rat in a hole that doesn't contribute to anything at all in the game or the story, so it seemed like a complete waste of money to animate. Yeah, I actually thought because of the way it was animated that it must have been an important thing to pick up, that rat, or no, the rat no, was guarded it, in. It's just there, and it's basically just a, 
minding its own business and then it snarls at you. Supposedly that rat will be important for the climax of the game because I'm going to assume at some point Fral is going to come back to the first stage of the game because classic practice of storytelling dictates that coming full circle implies going back to the place of the beginning for the end, essentially. So I'm going to assume that rat will be important for the end of the game that we have not seen, but still since we have not seen it again, yeah. I'm just going to say, what a waste of money, la di dar. <laughs> yeah, there was a reason why I couldn't record this game, because as soon as I tried to record it, it was nothing but a black screen. So, don't know whether it's because the machine is too busy dreaming or something, but yeah, that's what happened to it. So, yeah, I'm going to say this myself as well. Overall quality of the game itself doesn't look too bad, I would say. My... Standards are very low, obviously, because I'm enjoying it more as a history piece than an actual game. You know, because I'm too busy nerding out about having something that should not be in human hands, essentially. <laughs> well, technically, you're not holding it as a physical object. Well, true, but still. <laughs> I think we should talk about gameplay-wise, though, because... Uh... So, I do believe it's the classic interface that was made famous by games such as Full Throttle, and later on, The Curse of Monkey Island, which I'm going to pretend just this once that it doesn't exist. <laughs> you use the left button of your mouse to click on things, things that are obviously clickable, that is, and you hold on to it, and then as you hold on the clicked button onto the object you want to interact with, a mini menu shall appear that gives you three big options, which are uh, observe or examine, talk and or eat and or spit, as it were, and also the hand action, which is for picking up or using. Once you release your mouse to one of these three icons that represent an action, an action will, in fact, ensue. It's about as intuitive as it can get. I mean, I'm just going to assume that it's the left button of the mouse that does that because, you know, common sense and good game design would imply that. Unless, of course, you're playing to shade the adventures of the fifth musketeer in which everything is completely backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still sore about that. Oh yeah, I can tell about that. <laughs> oh boy. I do enjoy certain details of the animation, such as Thrall spitting on that uh, unconscious guy, or just slapping him to check out if he's unconscious or not. I think there was great care, or at least a shadow of a great care, put into the animation department of this game. If it were to be a complete game, it might have looked much better. Yes. It might have looked way better, as well as have actual sound effects put into places that oh, yeah, should be. It's, it's an extremely silent game, I have to say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, other than music, yeah, some form of music that seems to be there for ambience, sound effects kind of seem... Come and go. Sound effects in this game are like titles. They come and go. Yeah. And, Did you and, get the reference? There? Yes, <laughs> and 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 strange enough, some sound effects even uh, seem to be placeholders because uh, some of them don't seem to make sense to be a sound effect coming from said place the sound comes from. I believe Madhog has mentioned one of those irregularities of the sound effects not matching, like the rat snarling, like some sort of beast. Though also, I will point out one thing: Blizzard must have a problem with communications at the time of making this game because one of the characters who you meet is a dragon and he for some reason is smoking a hookah you know what i'm talking about right one of those uh strangely glass shaped bottles with a long tube that people smoke out of a dragon is smoking out of one of those a bong yes that's it for some reason i had it in my mind so so you have a dragon Smoking a bong in a <laughs> Warcraft game. 
Yeah, because there must have been some communication issues then, because they must have Did just... Did I think they were actually making an Alice in Wonderland game? Because I think that might have been some other kind of creature they had in mind. <laughs> the team at Blizzard must have told the person working on the animation, okay, the dragon's smoking. It's like, <laughs> okay. Blizzard are thinking, okay, we told that guy, so the dragon will have smoke coming out of his mouth. Every so huh. often. Smoking dragons. You know, it feels like that if you just change a word in that sentence, you could have something interesting in your end. Mm. Mm. Foreshadowing. Yes, foreshadowings of smokings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, dragons, but yes. Yes, we have dragons too, so don't worry about that. So it's best not to uh, think too much about quality at this point, but it's, but it's still fun Although, to point them out. So the game clearly was supposed to have a full voice cast. Oh, yeah. Um, since it's incomplete, there are moments such as that conversation with a goblin in which the voice clips disappear entirely. Yeah, it's, so basically it's not just in the intro sequence that happens. That sort of thing oh, happens. No. Yeah, where lip syncing and voice lines seem to be missing or misplaced. Uh, though I will say another thing, though, about uh, the voice cast, though. Interesting enough, they had a few high-standing voice actors come in to voice these characters. Tony, Tony J. J. Tony J. Yeah. been the one in the intro sequence. I mean, he's awesome in anything he does, but this seems like waste. kind of... It's, yeah, it seems sad and a waste for the late Tony J. You know, in my standing, especially since I... Really love his voice. They were already doing a rip-off of the Hunchback of Notre Dame. They could just have the villain just talking like Frollo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah. It seems like they were not even trying and to the... mask that fact. I and, mean, Tony yeah. J, it, it's a pretty huge giveaway. Yeah. Another voice actor that people will know if you are into your Warcraft uh, past games is Bill Roper, I believe his name is. He voice acted as certain characters in Warcraft games. And the other big name that comes to mind is Peter Cullen is in this game. Oh, that's good. Yeah, he plays as one of the orcs, actually. Perfect. So I wouldn't have it any other way. So, yeah, you can tell already that Blizzard put a lot of money in, which is very weird, considering I'm saying this, about Animation Magic had money, apparently. We've got to have money. Animation Magic 1998. <laughs> <laughs> which is... Uh, I you know... Yeah? I actually am behind their decision of pulling the plug on this game, because, really... From a financial standpoint, I think that could have been a disaster. If they would have completed that game and actually spending all the money they needed to spend in order to make that quality product that they loved to do, and then it would have bombed, that could have cost them dearly. So they cut their losses before the game had actually the chance to lose, so to speak. And don't get me wrong, chances are it would have lost, even as a big name. With yeah. a strong fan base, as soon as they noticed it's a point and click adventure game, they would have snubbed it. Because let me tell you something about RTS fans they are not fans of anything else that's not RTS. <laughs> yeah, usually they're not. <laughs> but especially if you can. They're a bunch of elitist donkeys, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, come at me, bros. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not serious, but. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's not serious, folks. Don't take his word for that. Yeah, I agree. I'm actually in agreement with you on this. Despite the fact that I really wanted to see this game finished, sort of thing, they did the right choice of not actually finishing this game because not only would it have lost because, as history has taught us, the death of the point-and-click adventure games was starting to go on the decline and go on to the... Uh, uh, let's see what the word is. They didn't die off completely because... No, they had a kind of a renaissance as of late. Have you seen Friend Bao? That's pretty good. Yes, it definitely is. I mean, adventure games were still going on technically. It's just that no one of big names or any games were worthy of note uh, to reignite 
the flame of the point-and-click adventure genre. Well, I think they are occupying a pretty snazzy and cozy piece of the overall video game market. Because the way the market is structured today is, uh, on one hand, we have the AAA industry, yeah. which is on the decline of uh, uh, another crisis, and they're most likely going to have to deal with some major repercussions in a generation or two. Yep. And then there is literally everything else. And in this second portion of the gaming industry, which is, again, the literally everything else, there is space enough and a place for everything and every genre and all that. Especially yeah. with the advent of a platform such as Steam that allows indie developers to flourish and get themselves noticed. Sometimes they get too noticed. Five nights of friends. Yes. That's the whole point. Uh, there is something for everyone available at the click of a button of a mouse. Hopefully it's the left button of the mouse and not the right button. <laughs> of course. But like I was saying, though, uh, from the hindsight point of view, at the time, before the the resurgence of the genre, Blizzard decided to cut their losses, as you put it. The other reason I think, you know, they made the right choice is because, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, Lord of the Clans was not doing anything new with the genre. You know, despite its flavour of being Warcraft and only the biggest diehard Warcraft fans would eat it up, most likely. You know, anyone else, like the RTS fans, would probably would not have been into it. Yeah, RTS was pretty big uh, yeah. in uh, the 90s, what with all the Warcrafts and Age of Empires. Yeah, and uh, Starcraft that was to come out. Civilization. So pretty much, Blizzard were not doing anything new with the point-and-click genre. They were just taking what worked in every other point-and-click adventure and put it into the game, essentially. You know, right down to having the hero talk to himself a lot. Uh, Which, honestly, at this point in time in my life, I find extremely annoying and also extremely very condescending, as in, oh, 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 I just managed to escape from this fortress I was kept prisoner in. Oh, it seems nobody's following me, but I better distance myself a bit more. Yeah. It's really annoying, honestly. Right down to the interface, and also to the puzzles that we've seen in the game thus far of playing it. Pretty uh, straightforward affair from yeah, what I've seen. Yeah, that's... Uh, not too complicated, but not too simple either. I think it's a right balance, just about. Um, although, I have to say, having uh, Thrall just... Uh, launching himself with a catapult, smashing himself comically on the wall, kind of tonally clashes with the atmosphere that the game wanted. <laughs> yeah, so pretty much, folks, what, you, uh, what you're hearing here is Warcraft essentially was trying to put on the skin of the point-and-click genre when it really didn't have to. I mean, they could have tried to stand on their own feet, but yet, no, they were trying to just copy what everyone else was doing so i think if this was to come out i think reviewers probably would have slammed them for that you know that they weren't doing anything new or revolutionary at all with what they had at least the game that we are going to have a long playthrough series of in the next couple of weeks or so that game tried to do something different oh yeah and we'll, so... <laughs> we'll be we'll be seeing about that. That's a whole. We'll be other, seeing about that. Yes. That's a whole other kettle. That's a whole other kettle full of dragons. <clears throat> mm -hmm, yeah, burning dragons. <laughs> anyway, uh, final thoughts. Um, I think I've said mine. Other than the fact, despite how I feel about the game, I still love that I have this. You know, that we have this a piece of history that we could examine closely. We could see what essentially is the time capsule of what a game looks like when stopped at mid-development. It's actually a very intriguing uh, and fascinating thing, I find. What else can I say about a game that's unfinished? Because it be anything else I would say about it would be totally unfair, and hindsight would dictate to me that this would have bombed, no matter how you sliced it. Yes, pretty much. 
especially if you let the people responsible for the Zelda CDI games to animate your introduction cutscenes. What were they thinking? Honestly, I mean, they have enough money to hire the likes of Tony J and Peter Cullen. They cannot afford a better animation department than the CDI guys. Again, which is strange enough. If these scenes were polished, I think, the, like I said before, that they would have had an actual thing that would have been great on their resume rather than the crap fest they released. Are you kidding? We would have missed... Crazy laughing slave master guy. Ha 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 Right and then. <laughs> always. So this has been our look about at the Wycraft Lard of Clones. <laughs> yes, this has been a little history lesson and a look back at a, I wouldn't say obscure, but an infamous title that has been elusive for 18 years. Actually 19 by the time we get to next year. Well, no more. Nothing can stay hidden in today's age of information. In fact, the problem, I would argue, is not things being hidden or known. The problem is that even if you know things, Donald Trump still gets elected. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and Animation Magic uh, made a prediction about something for 2017, so we'll see if that happens. What would well that be? Oh, no, no, nothing. Just a nuclear holocaust involving people turning to animals, uh, hybrids, in a beat em up style uh, genre of gaming. You have me very intrigued right now. <laughs> very intrigued, you, you cheeky bastard. <laughs> Good night, everybody, and take care of yourselves. And remember mm. two things history repeats itself. And history cannot be hidden. Mmm, me thrall, me going to play with catapult now. Ah! <laughs> Slap. <laughs> That's not the right sound effect, but okay. <laughs> uh, good night, all, and take care. <laughs>